Hey everybody! So you either got your controller box or you just finished your own build with the DIY kit. But you don't know what's next. It said plug and play. So you know what? It's really just plug and play if you got the plug and play box. If you just build your own, you should now check the tutorial by Surfdado uh, for the first installment. Uh, he goes through every single setting that you should also do now and after that you still can come back here and do the motor detection and the IMU configuration or change your shape or whatever. But I just show what you got to do with the plug and play controller box. Yeah, it's easy. Just plug it in. Take the connectors, battery, hall, sensor is next to the moto connector and then also the foot pad is next to the battery. Just plug it in as if you would sw just swap the controller. So next step I will just assemble the bumpers okay now that's it so it says plug and play you got the plug and play box you can just check it now turn it on and for the first try I would just check it like this I have posi enabled so maybe you have to activate both sensors but on the plug and play box you already got a tune on it so let's check it out. Now what you can do is make some quick pushes or some hard brakes and if the motor doesn't crunch everything is fine. If you hear some motor crunching or your board is not level, you feel the nose is low or high, then you have to do the IMU calibration for the motor crunches, the motor detection. That's what we do next. Okay, I hope you already installed the VASC tool we need to open this now and then you find your device maybe the first time it's not preferred it's like this then you should prefer it so you know it's your device then we connect and then on the first screen you see the setup motors and we will just do this now you have to check that your wheel is free to spin and then we can go ahead. We don't load default parameters because you either just have to plug and play with the tune loaded or you just did all the settings and you don't want to lose them now. So we say no. Then we go to the EUC and next. We choose the large outrunner next and yes. Now we can type in the number of cells that we have. Now this has uh, still the stock XR battery with 15 cells and the amp hours are 6. You can check the other numbers here. I've shown a couple and we go ahead next battery settings okay 
the next tab you have to check direct drive the wheel diameter is 285 millimeters so uh, that's for the 11 inch tires and it has 30 motor poles and then we can run the detection okay so don't be afraid see i'm sitting next to the one wheel and you will hear some strange noises now moves forward backward faster slower Yeah, and that's it. You can check the numbers, just if everything is good, maybe you can want to compare it, but I just take it as it is. And then we can finish the detection. But now we have to change three things, because after detection there are still some parameters that get a default uh, value. So we go to the motor configuration, general and the current. It changes to some weird amps here, I don't know why. But you want some more amps, the least you want uh, is 80. And I go with 120. And minus 120. The rest is just as you had it before, but also the battery current changed. Uh, for the stock battery, I recommend 30 or 35. Write it. And then we have the voltage. And that's very important to change too because this is the start of the cutoff voltage. You don't want to, cu uh, uh, to cut off uh, your one wheel uh, when you get to, down to 45 voltage. That's when the pushback, the low voltage pushback should start. And you will notice that you are low on battery, uh, but you don't want to cut off it here. So I just go down to 35 and start with the voltage cutoff so it uh, gets weaker at 40 voltage. You can also calculate this by multiplying uh, 2.5 voltage per cell and then you come to something about 35 and 2.5 0.7 voltage per cell for the start and you will come around 40 so that's good here and then there is one other in the fog tab you just scroll down and it's the last value you just set it to the half of it it's at yeah, say 1.42 and we go to 0.71 and right yeah that's it for the motor and it should be good now yeah the last thing we want to do is the IMU calibration but we just do a short calibration um, to set it level maybe you got some what the fuck rails or thunder rails and you want to calibrate to that angle just uh, place it level and it will calibrate to the position so um, we go to the app configuration and just uh, on the bottom right you can 
open the menu and there you can choose calibrate IMU and now for the 3.1 version of the little Fokker you have to choose a yaw offset of 90 degrees because uh, the IMU is placed differently and then just calibrate IMU while we wait doesn't take long yeah and now you see it's not super level here maybe I have a offset a pitch offset of 1.45 uh, degrees and a roll offset that's the sideways uh, almost two degrees off yeah but you can adjust that later or just take it as a level maybe it's correct and apply and write close yeah now we can check it out should be level no motor crunching and you just set up your individual motor and you're ready to go.